Hey everyone, welcome to Area 616. Last night I attended a 10.30 showing of Avengers Infinity War on opening night. That was actually the first time I've ever gone on opening night for a Marvel movie and it was absolutely worth it. Today I was originally planning to do a spoiler free review and a spoilers discussion like I usually do but honestly I just don't want to. There's so much spoiler stuff to talk about with this movie. I really just want to devote all of my time into making a monster video about that. Which is what this is right here. What did I think of the movie? Honestly, it is easily, without a doubt, 100% my favorite MCU film ever. And one of my all-time favorite movies. There are so many things to love about Avengers Infinity War. The movie has amazing comedy, but also, at the same time, even better drama. It's amazing to me how well they balance the tones of Infinity War. I mean, it can go from hilarious scenes with Thor and the Guardians to a heartbreaking character death, and it feels completely natural. I've got to say, the Russo brothers and screenwriters Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely have proven themselves to be masters at juggling huge casts. First with Civil War, and now this. In both cases, they managed to include every character that needed to be there and somehow gave each and every one of them the exact right amount of screen time they needed to have. No one feels like they weren't in the movie enough or that they were in it too much. Everyone gets exactly what they deserve. The action in the movie is actually really great. I'll admit there are some moments, particularly in the final fight in Wakanda, where the shaky cam is a bit too much. But, for the most part, it's all very entertaining, and uses each character's skill set perfectly. My personal favorite fights in the movie were Ebony Maw and Cole Obsidian's attack on New York towards the beginning. And I also really love the scene where Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Spider-Man, and the Guardians all ambushed Thanos on Titan. But what I really, really loved was the more emotional bits of the movie, and how important they were to it. Honestly, it surprised me. This movie almost seemed disinterested in big action sequences, or at least not as interested in it as it is the character moments. A lot of characters get really, really great emotional moments. I will say, Thor had a lot of great scenes, and the whole side quest of him going to Nidavellir and all that was cool, but... I think I was ultimately right in my theories and predictions video where I said it wouldn't contribute much to the main plot. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed that part of the movie, but I mean at the end of the day, it was really there just to give Thor something to do for a while. All it really did was erase everything that was done to Thor and Ragnarok, which was admittedly a little annoying. Vision and Scarlet Witch's story throughout the movie was really great. I thought they did a great job portraying their relationship and the heartbreak of how it ends. A theme I noticed throughout the film seems to be war, and specifically how you can't win a war without losses. There are so many moments where, if the heroes had been willing to take a loss, they would have beaten Thanos before he had a chance. If Scarlet Witch had blown up Vision's Mind Stone sooner, if Doctor Strange had left Tony Stark to die and escaped with the Time Stone, but quite frankly, it showed these heroes are actually pretty weak emotionally. They're not willing to sacrifice people close to them, and they paid for that. That was just a really brutal and very well done part of the movie. Thanos was an amazing villain for me. I think he's probably Marvel's all-time best. What makes him so great is how truly menacing he is. He is the first Marvel villain ever who is allowed to actually kill some of the characters, and it really pays off. The whole movie has a real sense of stakes, and Thanos has this air of danger. He's this unstoppable force, truly tougher than anything the Avengers have ever faced before. It's that combined with his emotional beats, the fact that you completely understand him as a character, that makes him so great. He's the kind of character that I almost don't want to see get killed. I mean, sure, I hate him and, and want to see justice delivered to him as soon as possible, but I'd almost like him to stick around like he does in the comics, as this constant threat that could come out at any moment. At the end of the day, Avengers Infinity War is easily Marvel's best movie to date, for me, 
It did everything so, so right. But okay, now for the spoilers discussion. The first thing I want to talk about was one of the biggest questions surrounding the movie before its release. Where is the Soul Stone? Is it in Wakanda? Is it with Heimdall? The truth of it turned out to be completely unexpected in a great way, and I think it shows why it's a, probably a good thing they're making the movies and not us. Turns out the Soul Stone is on some planet, Vormir, but that's not really important. What matters is that Gamora kn knows where it is, and the emotional weight of that scene. Thanos tortures Nebula to get the location out of Gamora, and when he gets there, the Stonekeeper, who, yes, don't worry, I'm getting to him, tells him that he has to sacrifice the one thing he loves, Gamora. Which he does. He killed Gamora. I did not expect that at all. I mean, she's far from the only big character to die, but honestly, it's hard to imagine how she could come back from that. I mean, she's dead. It's honestly hard to imagine a Guardians movie without Gamora. Infinity War was also filled with quite a few surprise appearances, as well as some characters who I thought would appear but didn't at all. Hawkeye wasn't in the movie at all beyond a brief mention that shines some light on his role in Avengers 4. As we previously learned, he's retired, he's back home with his family. If I had to guess, I'd say Hawkeye is going to step out of retirement and adopt the Ronan persona of the comics to try and figure out what's happened and where half of his team is. He'll probably rejoin with Cap. I imagine Ant-Man and Wasp will join them as well. A long time ago, reports came out saying that Japanese gangsters had been cast in Avengers 4, which led to a bunch of fan theories. Uh, a bunch were thinking maybe they're the hand, but recently it hit me that I kind of know their purpose. I'm willing to bet they're going to recreate Ronan's first appearance from New Avengers issue 11, where he fights a bunch of Japanese gangsters. <laughs> That would be really cool to see. There were some surprise, albeit brief, appearances from Nick Fury and Maria Hill in the post credit scene, which turned out to be what they were filming back in January. In this scene, Fury sends out a distress call to none other than Captain Marvel herself. We don't see her, but we now know she's absolutely coming to join up with the Avengers for Avengers 4, but I've got a whole video planned about that. Right now, I want to talk about the real shock cameo in Infinity War. Yeah, you know the one I'm talking about. The Stonekeeper on Vormir, and the fact that he's actually none other than the Red Skull. That's the one that caused the entire audience to audibly gasp, excitedly turn to the person next to them and say, That's Red Skull! And then clap. I had some theories that he might be in Avengers 4, of course, but this was completely unexpected. In the movie, he says that after the Space Stone deemed him unworthy, he was chosen to spend eternity guarding the Soul Stone, where he's been for the last 73 or so years. With this, I have so, so many questions. In the movie, he wears this ghostly shroud and looks like he's floating, so it makes me wonder just what kind of power he has now, or if he's even still alive, really. Part of me feels like he might be a ghost which would actually be really cool. But more importantly, now that the Soul Stone has found an owner, what's next for the Red Skull? Because, I mean, he's served his purpose. Does this mean he's free? I will say, in this, he seems to be wiser and less interested in, you know, world domination and all that. So it's completely possible that, even being freed from his role, he might not have any plans for revenge or anything at all. I'm really, really interested to see what happens with Red Skull next, because I mean, it could be anything from he returns and tries to destroy everything again to nothing. Either way, I'm excited. Now, of course, the biggest question on everyone's mind before seeing Avengers Infinity War, who will die? Well, characters certainly did die, more so than I previously expected to. So here is every MCU character that died in order of death, Heimdall, Loki, the Collector, Gamora, the Vision, and then after Thanos snapped his fingers and actually wiped out trillions of people, there was Scarlet Witch, 
Black Panther, Star-Lord, Drax, Mantis, White Wolf, Falcon, Groot, Doctor Strange, and easily the most shocking of them, Spider-Man. His death in particular was really well done. I love how the MCU continues to portray him so realistically as just a kid. This body count is shockingly high. I honestly didn't expect so many big name characters. Now, it's highly doubtful that many of these will stay dead. Namely, I doubt characters like Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, Star-Lord. They'll probably come back somehow. The question isn't really so much if they'll come back, just how. Now, I'm honestly conflicted on this. I want a lot of these characters to come back, but at the same time, I kind of don't. Their death scene was so, so well done. I mean, the whole theater was just stunned by what they were watching, and to have it be like, oh, never mind, they're all fine, would, in my opinion, kind of ruin the ending of this movie. Like I said, I'm expecting Spider-Man and Black Panther and bigger characters like that to come back, but for the others, honestly, I'd say to let them go. Maybe have them sacrifice themselves in Avengers 4 or something like that. Characters like Falcon, Scarlet Witch, Mantis, and Winter Soldier. I do have some theories as to how they might survive. I'd like to save them for my Avengers 4 video, which I'm planning for this coming Monday or April 30th. But at the end of the movie, Tony is stuck on Titan, completely alone except for Nebula, who he's never met before. And Cap and the other Avengers are in Wakanda, completely shocked by their massive failure. I really love the scene where Cap just got down on the ground and just gave up. So well done. This, this movie was really great. It was really good. But of course, I'd love to know all of your theories and on everything I've mentioned. The comment section for this video is a spoilers discussion for Avengers Infinity War, so if there's anything you noticed in the movie that I didn't mention, any theories on what might happen with Red Skull or the character deaths, anything really. I'd love to know all of your thoughts and theories in the comments below. I'm going to end this right here for now. But trust me, I have plenty of Infinity War related video ideas simmering. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Hand me down the walking cane.